This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, in the last session, we saw how to configure file adapter. Uh, we saw two different operations, right? Read adapter and write adapter. We we did one one small POC. Okay, we did one small POC where we are reading a file from inbound folder, and then we are processing the data. We are calculate the total total marks, and then we are writing a output file. We we are we are writing the output data in a output file inside a outbound folder. Uh, we did this uh, POC and we completed some test cases as well, right? Now, today I want to show you how to insert the data in a DB table, database table, okay? I'm going to utilize the same example, okay? In the same example, what I want to do, read the file from the inbound folder, get the data into people process, and then insert the data in a outbound file also insert the data in a database table this is what the requirement i want to achieve okay so read the file process the data insert the data into insert the data into two things one is outbound folder outbound file outbound file in an outbound folder number two i want to insert the data in a database table this is what i want to achieve that means i want to integrate with a database okay for that, what we need to do, we need to configure database adapter. We need to do something with our database adapter. I mean, we have different adapters here, right? In, this, in the list, if you see, we have different adapters. Of course, we discussed it, right? In the last session, we discussed we can use these adapters when we are interacting with non-web service or not REST web service, non-SOAP web services and non REST web services. If something else you want to integrate, then you have dependency on the adapters. Okay. So DB table is not a web service. DB table is not a REST service. So we need to interact with the database table, not only database table, guys. You can interact with the database objects. When I said database objects, table, views, functions, procedures, concurrent programs. So these all are database objects. You can interact with database objects by using DB adapter. So this DB adapter you can use to integrate any database, not only Oracle database, guys. Oracle database is most most famous database, no doubt in that. But this DB adapter is not just for Oracle database. This is for any database. Okay, we'll do some POC with Oracle database, but but note have a note. It is not just for Oracle database. You can connect or you can integrate any database. Uh, let's say SQL Server. Okay. Um, there are different databases available in market, right? From different vendors. You can connect any database by using database adapter. Okay. Anyway, so what are all the things we need to do to work with this adapter? Okay. So, of course, you can also get the tutorial. Uh, like I shown you right for file adapter. Similarly, you can also get the tutorial for database adapter. Oracle SOA database adapter. Okay, you can find some documentation. Oracle provided documentation. You can go through see especially Oracle JCA adapters doc for database. Oracle JCA adapter for database. You can use this documentation. Okay. So you go through it and you, you will find a lot of content about the Oracle DB adapter. Okay, anyway, I will show you some examples today. Mm, let me ping you in the chat. We'll ping you this in the chat. Keep this URL for your reference. You can get the documentation here. Okay, so a lot of content you can find. You can go through it. Not only database adapter, guys, you can see all the adapters here. File FTP. See, we already discussed about file adapter, right? So go through this chapter. Go through this chapter. You can find a lot of content about the file adapter. There are other operations, other options in the wizard. You can go through all of them. Okay. And now this one is for database adapter. Just go through it and come back whatever question you have. Uh, don't worry. I mean, uh, you have a question and which is not discussed in the class. Uh, that is also fine. You can reach me. You, if you go through this document, you have some questions about the about any specific section or any specific point, you can come back to me uh, with your question. 
okay so you need to go through the document then you will get more content okay right so next thing right so i'm ready to configure this oracle deep oracle adapter for that what we need so we need list of things guys we need a bunch of things i need a database i need a database what i am using is oracle xe i'm using oracle xe as my database of course it is not limited to oracle xe oracle xe database oracle xe database is a light version suppose if you go for a full version that is enterprise edition um, that need a lot of resources in your laptop uh, like ram processor that take a lot of resources but instead of going with enterprise edition i want to go with oracle xe database which is a lighter version of database okay which will consume minimum resources in your laptop okay for practice purpose this is enough we are not learning database we, our intention is to learn so right so uh, no need to have an enterprise edition xc is enough okay this is a light version okay uh, and then and then we need to set up db objects okay i mean i want to set up a student info table table views triggers sequence procedures functions all are called as db objects okay so i want to set up one table right so this is who need to do it i mean here we have no other option we are doing it but uh, in work in your in the real work okay there are separate teams who handles database okay so dba database administrator they will take care how to set up the database servers okay and the sql developer SQL developer, he will take care about DB objects. So this is not our, this is not a SOA guy's resource, SOA guy's responsibility. There are different people who play their own responsibilities. Database setup will be performed by DB administrator. DB object setup, in our case, it is just a table, but a lot of, in, in any project, hundreds of tables, procedures, functions, triggers, so many DB objects we need to configure and set up. For that, SQL developers will take care, not the SOA developer okay and then we have third thing server level server level connection connection server level connection between soa server and database okay this we need to ask weblogic administrator or the soa administrator so uh, admin okay but but there are cases developer also asked to do this at least in the lower environments not the production not about production but at least in the lower environments oracle so a developer will ask you to do this okay this contains two different sub configurations so number one we need to configure data source jndi and number two db adapter JNDI. Okay, there are two things we need to configure. Okay, of course, WebLogic administrator or the SOA administrator will take up this job, but there are cases SOA developer also asked to do this. Okay, we should learn about it. Okay, and then you have to configure your program. This is something in the J developer. In J developer, you need to configure J developer. J developer to DB connection, J developer to DB connection, and then your SOA project, SOA project with DB adapter configuration. Okay, if you do all these things, you are ready with, you are ready with your DB service, I mean database integration. Okay, so guys, if you see the step number one, it is one time configuration. You no need to do the installation again and again. Once you do the installation, that is enough. I will show you how to do this installation. And then step number two, you need to configure the database object. So the setting up the database object is a one time job. Suppose if you want to set up another table instead of student info, you want to set up another, another table employee info. Again, you need to create the table. Okay, and then uh, this is also one time setup server level connection if you want to connect with one database okay one connection is enough of course you want to create multiple connections it is also allowed but if you can manage with one connection you no need to create multiple connections for the same database let's assume you have two different database 
okay then you have to do this step two times okay this is a this is this step will establish a connection between your sova server and oracle database or some other database whatever database you want to integrate with that database you can establish a connection here okay and then we go to j developer this is also one time job if the database uh, won't change if you want to connect one database one db connection is enough of course if you create multiple db connections in j developer not an issue okay and then we configure the soa project with a, based on our requirement we we already know our requirement right we will read the file and the file we need to write in the outbound folder and so also we want to insert the data into a database table we'll do that any questions till now any questions from anyone okay so the first yeah. go ahead go ahead if you have any question okay right so for the first step it's a it's an installation process guys i already shared a link with you um i already shared a link with you in the previous session okay see this see this url go through this url i shared the dump with you of course you can download it from google no doubt okay but i already shared it i already shared this link with you it's a it's a public access link if you open this for open this link you can see oracle xc zip file just download this zip file and unzip this unzip this and follow this documentation i provided all the steps I mean, it's easy installation very easy installation you just simply click next 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 that's it nothing else you have to do okay it's a very easy installation and then uh, once the installation completed your database local database is ready oracle xc version of your database okay and it, we are using 11g of course uh, oracle released uh, even oracle 22 oracle xc 22 also released but that's fine we we really don't worry about the uh, database version uh, any version the integration process will remain same so this is the lighter version that's why i shared with you okay it is the most lightweight uh, it will not make any impact on your laptop uh, it, it will not consume more resources from your laptop so i just i suggest this to use for your practice purpose okay done so i already installed it in my database so i will go to the next step so what i want to do is i want to establish i want to establish uh, some server connection let me let me take this as step 2 and this, i will make it as step 3 I will go in that order okay i will i will name it step 2 and i will name it step 2 and 3 okay i just change the order nothing else right so let me finish this step so for this what you need to do you need to do it for some server level configuration okay so i want to introduce something called web logic console web logic console okay so web logic console this is the url http colon slash slash localhost colon 7101 slash console okay guys this host name host name and port number may vary for your server I mean, if, if your server is somewhere in a remote machine, you have to use that specific server host name, that specific server port number. Okay. So already we, we are using a local SOVA server, our integrated SOVA server. So it is okay if you can use local host, but your server is somewhere in a remote machine, not your local server. Then you have to provide proper host name and port number. Anyway, let me go to this console. This is called WebLogic console. In WebLogic console, most of the server side configurations we will do. I will show you how to configure the DB connection. This part I want to show you data source JNDI and DB adapter JNDI. There are two things I want to show you how to configure in your WebLogic server. Okay, let me log in. Okay, I just logged in into my console. If it asks you username and password, just provide the same username and password which you are using for enterprise manager login, right? Use the same one. Observe the navigation, it's very simple configuration. So before doing this connection, you need to have some information, guys. If you want to establish a DB connection, you need to have some information. DB host name, DB host name, DB service, service name, service R XID, people will call service R XID, SID, not XID, SID, okay? And then you need DB port number. 
uh, where the DB is running. Okay, and DB user and DB password. Okay, at the time of installation, you have to provide the password. Just remember the password. Okay, so I I want to establish DB connection. So for that, I need all these details. My DB, I installed my database in my local machine, so I will use local host as the host name. Suppose database is installed somewhere in a remote machine, you have to get the details from your DBA. Generally, who will set up the database? DBA team, right? We need to get the database details from DBA team, like what is the host name of the database? What is the SID of the database? Okay, what is the port number of this database? What is the username? system and i am using this as the password okay this, this is my db information i'm using this db information clear now let me go back to weblogic console so here i want to configure the data source jnda let me show you the first step data source jnda for that what you need to do you are in the weblogic console uh, go to services see the services expand services here you can see an option called data sources just click on the data sources okay see here these are all the different existing data source your your sova server comes with predefined data sources okay but what we want to do is we want to configure a new data source for our database whichever database you want to connect that database you can connect by with, by using this configuration okay let's select generic data source generic data source right we need to provide the connection details here so you can give a name for your data source you can give a name i want to say oracle xc uh, data source oracle xc data source okay this is my data data source name it is just a user defined keyword guys you can give abc not an issue it is just a user defined keyword give meaningful keyword i suggest you to give meaningful keyword okay and then j and di so this is also user defined keyword you can say abc xyz no doubt in that but the, 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 these two things are used for two different purposes name is just a display name it is a display name but this will be used j and di name is used programmatical access Okay, so I mean, from your program, something you want to do with the database, you can connect to, to connect the database. You can use this J and DI name. Okay, of course, it is user defined, but this whatever name you use here, this will be used anywhere else you want DB connection. Okay, in your server, in a program, or somewhere else you want to connect to the database, you use this J and DI name, not the name property. We don't use the name property. We use the J and DI name property. This is technical. This is for technical use. This is just a display name, okay? And then go to JDA name. So here, what I want to do, uh, JDBC slash Oracle XE. Some name, you can give some name. That's what I'm saying. It is user-defined keyword. You no need to restrict. I mean, there is no predefined keyword you need to follow. It is just a user-defined key, okay? So my J data source JDA name. My data source JNDA name is this one JDBC slash Oracle XC. I just provided some user defined keyword as per industry standards. Okay, as per industry naming convention, we use this kind of naming convention. Is it mandatory to follow the naming convention? No, you, you, you simply give ABC that also works here. Okay, and then what is your database type? So I told you right in the beginning, this adapter we can use, we can use not only for oracle database you can connect all these types of databases all these many types of databases available of course we want to connect oracle database we want to connect oracle database but there are so many other database uh, also supported by this adapter okay then anyway we are connecting we are we are we are planning to integrate oracle database so i selected oracle click next and now guys i will talk about this it is a driver it is driver so i will talk about this anyway uh, but there are two type of drivers if you observe xa and thin i will talk about these two there, there is a different integration model if you go with xa what happened thin what happened we'll see okay anyway for now for now you can select you can select uh, oracle driver for instance connection oracle driver for instance connection let's see what will happen okay and then 
click next i'm, I'm selecting xa i will tell you what is this and uh, what is the other one it's thin what is thin and what is thin xa i will explain both click next so simply i mean see guys when you are doing the configuration read everything read every instruction on the page okay read every line what they are saying okay then go to next screen so here we selected thin xa so it is an xa xa database connection and anyway i will explain give me some time i will explain you go to next in this screen you need to provide the DT, database details your database details okay your database name that means your host name of the database you need to provide local host local host sorry uh, your host uh, database name is service service id or sid service name or sid you need to provide database name means service id or sid i already told you my database service id or sid is xe okay and then host name your da my database is installed in my local server so i said local host suppose your database is installed in a machine called abc.com you need to provide the host name as abc.com and the port name my port name is 1521 and the user i'm using system as my user system user manager is my database password okay done so that's it just provide the password and confirm the password nothing else just go to next screen click on next screen and here you can see all the details whatever you provided whatever you provided you can see you simply what you can do just simply test connection click on the test connection once you click on test connection it will it will show you whether the connection established between the sova server and database or not but if you don't get this green color success message that means you provided some wrong information okay click next now i want to tag this uh, data source connection with this default server anyway we are using integrated server right so it is only in default server suppose you are going for standalone standalone servers like admin server separate sova server separate osb server separate in that case where you want to use this data source you want to use this data source for sova programs osb programs you, you can select the target server okay you can see three servers here if you go with standalone servers individual servers like admin server sova server and osb server okay in that case you can see different you can see different options here multiple servers here admin server sova server osb at that time you can select along with which server you want to use this data source connection okay whatever the suppose you say sova server you select the sova server option then what happened your j your d, d data source jnda works for only sova programs okay you have the option to use this this connection used with only sova programs this connection used with only osb programs that way you can you can you have an option to choose okay anyway now click finish once you click finish this data source configuration completed okay so this part completed data source jnda configuration completed and this is the data source jnda name we provided done see all changes have been activated no restarts are necessary no restarts are necessary i, I made a server server level change but i no need to restart my server okay and you can see the list you can see the list here this is the data source we configured. The name of the data source is Oracle XC. JNDA name is JDBC slash Oracle XC. Okay, these two are predefined user defined keywords at the time of configuration. You don't need to do anything. Just, I mean, you don't need to worry about the naming convention. Naming convention is simply user defined. Done. So this part completed. This part completed. So now we need to configure the DB adapter JNDA. DB adapter JDA. So guys, DB adapter is a predefined program. Simply, I can say it's a Java program comes along with your SOA server. Okay. All adapters, not only DB adapter guy, file adapter also a predefined Java program. Okay. You can see uh, in the WebLogic console, if you go to deployments, simply click on this deployments option. Okay. It will show you all the programs which are pre-deployed in your sova server see these are all the different programs different programs facilitated are comes pre-installed in your sova server see this is aq adapter b2b ui so these are all the different components you have 
these are all the different components pre-built with pre, i mean they pre-loaded in your server server so this is just a program db adapter is a program these all are program. cloud sdk is a program aq adapter is a program so they are pre-loaded programs so at the time of uh, server installation itself all these programs will be loaded into your pro into your server that means if you see here with this integrated server with this integrated server there are 194 predefined programs pre-loaded programs you got it okay so guys if you if you open this weblogic console for the first time you can see uh, this option customize this table customize this table so what you can do is by default it is 10 you can make it 100 or 1000 you can make it 1000 otherwise what happened if you see if i make it 10 only 10 programs will be displayed here you need to go to the next page to see the further program see showing one of one to ten of 194 programs only 10 programs i'm seeing here preloaded programs where server is using all of them whenever required okay so you need to go to next screen to see the next programs clear so this is the next screen now we are in program program number 11 to 20. okay you go to next screen you can see the database adapter maybe 21 to 30 somewhere yeah database adapter so if you are not interested to move the screens like this what you can do simple go to this customize this table option here you can change the number i want to display all my programs at once i said thousand and say apply but there are no we don't have thousand programs we have only 199 194 programs preloaded anyway now we want database see this database so for database guys there are two options one is checkbox and one is hyperlink now i need to click hyperlink two different actions if I use checkbox, purpose is different. Hyperlink purpose is different. Okay, I want to go with hyperlink. Just click on the data DB adapter hyperlink. Okay, once you click on this DB adapter hyperlink, it will open DB adapter configuration, DB adapter program configuration. Go to configuration tab. This is the configuration tab in this outbound connection ports. Outbound connection ports. Okay, now you can see there are several predefined db adapter jndi db adapter jndi of course i want to define my own db adapter jndi just click new button click new button and this is the driver nothing you need to do just select the driver select the java api okay it's a java api click next so you can provide a name for your db adapter sir this is the again the industry standard industry standard to follow eas db slash oracle xe i'm just giving see this this keyword is db standard eas slash db is a industry standard naming convention and you can give any keyword here i'm just giving oracle xe it's user defined you can say abc but the whole keyword you can replace with a user defined keyword guys it's not mandatory to follow the naming convention we are following as per industry standards okay click finish so now what happened i just created one one db adapter jnda observe this this is one db adapter jndi i just created where is it this one this is the db adapter jndi i just created but we need to establish a connection between db adapter jndi and data source jndi okay what is that you need to establish connection connection between db adapter jndi to data source jndi this we need to do for this what i need go back to your j developer I'm sorry j jnda list db adapter jnda list just click on the newly created db adapter jnda click on this just click on this once you click on it you can see bunch of properties bunch of properties guys we created data source with thin xa driver thin xa driver right so you have to use this property suppose if you are using thin driver you have to use this property okay anyway i'm using thin xa driver so I, I will use this property here i want to do configuration of this property we need to set a value so in this property value section just click with your mouse cursor okay here you need to provide data source jndi data source jndi we are connecting we are connecting data source jndi okay and guys we need to provide the data source jndi and click enter button in the, in the keyword in your keyword okay have a note you need to click enter button in your keyboard if you don't click enter button in your keyboard it will not be saved properly 
you must click enter button in your keyboard whenever you edit any property in this list any property if you edit you need to click enter button here okay click save button click save button so now what happened this db adapter j and di db adapter j and di i db adapter j and di i connected with data source j and di okay so it is something like db adapter j and di will behave like a alias name of data source j and di okay so what is our db adapter j and di name eis db slash oracle xc this is the convention we provided but of course you can give any user user defined keyword okay done this is done right now you need to bounce your db adapter bounce or update db adapter in web logic console okay in our web logic console we need to bounce the db adapter let's see that it's very simple configuration what you can do go to deployments go to deployments here you can see all the deployed programs right you can go to your db adapter this time i want to select the checkbox not the hyperlink select the checkbox you can see a button here update okay we made some configuration in the db adapter and i want to update the db adapter i mean it's, i told you right it's a program it's a program i made one small change in my program so i want to update my program it's a kind of redeployment okay click update click update and guys here you can select redeploy it is all we are doing it redeployment we made the changes in the program we are redeploying the java program okay select uh, redeploy option and then guys uh, if you are doing it for the first time you are configuring db adapter j and da for the first time what happened it will ask you it will ask you the deployment plan path deployment plan path and it will show you by default plan.xml not plan underscore db i modified the name i modified the name here but for the first time if you are doing it in your web logic server it will ask you to provide plan.xml name okay it will give you a text edit option edit option and it it will give you the default name as plan.xml what you need to do is edit the file name as plan underscore db.xml just simply edit it okay then what happened this file is a server level configuration all your all your all the configuration whatever you did data source jnda db adapter jnda and the, you established the connection between them right that mapping that mapping will be saved in this plan.xml okay you just rename the plan.xml you can say plan underscore db okay simply go to next that's it nothing else you need to do right click next go to finish button that's it nothing you need to do you just simply see this is the rare program this is the java program we are redeploying and this is the additional configuration what we did i mean we created the db adapter j and da and mapping it to data source j and da that mappings you can see in this file you can go to the location you can go to this location and open the file once your configuration is done okay right click finish <clears throat> so once you click finish button you can see you can see a message whether the configuration successfully completed or not see all changes have been activated no restarts are necessary selected deployments were updated then if you see this message you are good instead of this message you see an error then somewhere you did the mistake okay we are good right so we are good with this configuration we are done with the data source jnda we are done with the db adapter and of course we created the connection between them and we bounce the server this is all server level configuration and the responsibility of the web logic and so i admin web logic admin of the so i admin okay but but there are there are cases developer also asked to do this we should know this okay and then what i want to do i want to set up the db objects in my database i have the database but there is no table in my database i want to create a table for that you need a tool you need a tool okay sql tool any 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 tool okay so sub example sql double developer is a tool 
it is one tool okay most of the time sql people will use this tool like how we are using j developer similarly uh, plsql developers plsql developers use this tool okay not only sql developer even j developer have an option j developer also have an option to interact with database like an ide database ide we can use this j developer not only sql developer okay there are several tools toad toad is one tool most famous tool uh, but it's a more licensed version you cannot uh, get it for free of cost it's a licensed version okay uh, so people suggest to use either sql developer or of course as a SOA developer we promote j developer but j developer is not uh, that's so sophisticated for SQL, uh, but we can use it. Okay, I will show you how JDeveloper is used to connect the database and two different uh, objects. Okay, it's very simple. Um, I'm using JDeveloper, right? Let me see in JDeveloper. In JDeveloper, first we need to create a DB connection. DB connection. See, this is a connection between JDeveloper and database. This is a connection between connection between j developer and database and this connection this connection is between server and database observe the difference guys this connection is sova server and database but this connection is j developer and database this is not at all related to server okay now go to your j developer it's very simple go to resources palette resources palette suppose if you don't see resources palette go to windows here you can see resources just click on it and you can see database you can see the database or you can drop down list go to the drop down list id connections and select database once you select database it will show you the connection configuration database connection configuration <clears throat> see guys this is not at all related to sova program or something else we are connecting j developer with the database that's it there is no link with SOA program or OSB program. It's an individual connection. Okay. So what I want to do, I want to give a connection name. Let me see, are there any database connections? I have, I already have two connections. Now I want to create the third one. I want to create the third one, let's say database. And I will give some naming convention for this Oracle, Oracle DB practice connection or something. You can, you can see something Oracle DB XE. Okay, some some name, and then my username is system, and the password password, and then save the password, save the password. Host name is localhost. SID is XE, and my port number is one five two one. Perfect. I provided all my database connection details. Test connection. You can see this is this will give you success or fail message here. If it is success, we are good done once you click the ok button you can see our j developer connected with this oracle database oracle database and these are all the different oracle database objects you can see list of objects see here if i go to tables these are all the these are all the tables already available in my database so we, we have nothing to do with this just leave it as is we are not going to do anything here okay this is the these are the list of tables and these are all the list of database objects list of database objects we have then now database connection configuration is completed connection configuration is completed now i want to run create table script i want to run create table script i want to create a table okay to create the table you can use some script something like this you can get it from google if you want and of course it's the basic information if anybody want to create a table uh, this is the basic syntax you need to follow so what i want to do i want to create a table stu underscore info my table name is student info <clears throat> and i want to create bunch of fields bunch of fields i will say stu underscore id uh, i want this as number data type is number uh, stu underscore name this is a varchar sir varchar is something uh, var carries something like a string data type okay i want to give the length of the string 20 characters <coughs> english marks english marks i want to say number 
Hindi marks number uh, marks. Okay, this is also number. The data type is number. So this is my table script. I want to create a table. I want to create a table. Uh, to create a table in Oracle database, we need to run this SQL statement. This is the SQL statement. Okay. So who who need to do this? Whose responsibility is this? Who will create the table? Uh, who will manage all this scripting part? So <laughs> so if you want to create any DB objects, if you want to create any DB objects, that will that will be taken care by SQL developer, not the SOA developer. But here we don't have a separate SQL developer, right? We are doing some practice, so. We want to do all these basic setups. Okay, so this is the table I want to create in my database. Okay, for that, Hello, anybody is there? Not Kaja, not a Sardi power issue problem. Ah, the power issue. Power power issue. Hi guys, uh, is I'm audible for you? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Hi, audible. Uh, some power connection issue. Okay, let me continue. So what we did, uh, 
we created the DB connection, right? So now I want to create a DB object in my database. So what I want to do, let's go to the tools. Uh, here you have an option called database and you can open the SQL worksheet. You can open SQL worksheet. So in this, when you are opening the SQL worksheet, it will ask you to select the database connection, which database you want to connect. I have several connections in my machine, but in your developer, you may not see all these connections because I just created all of them. Okay, but you can see the connection which you configured, which you configured in the previous step. Then click, fit, sorry, not there be database. I created Oracle DBXC, right? Just now, few minutes back, I created Oracle DBXC connection. Just select that connection and say, okay. So you can see an SQL worksheet here. It's an SQL worksheet. You can, you can write any script. So what is it? I have a create table script. I will write here. I will write here. Of course, you can save this file as well. Uh, let me save this file somewhere on my desktop. Okay, uh, I will give a name. Mm, practice, practice SQL script, something, some name. Okay, I will save it on my desktop. I will save it on my desktop, and this is the script I want to execute. So observe one thing, guys. If you go to Oracle DBXC connection here, if you see the tables, there are a bunch of tables. There are a bunch of tables, okay? So this table is not available. STU info is not available in this list, okay? Because that table is not there. You can also do one thing. You can run a select statement, select star from, select star from, STU underscore info, STU underscore info. You can run the script, select the script, and this is the run button. So see the result here. <clears throat> what it is saying, table are view does not exist. There is no table with this name because I did not create the table. Now I want to create it. Just run this create table script. If you run this create table script, okay, table created, table student info created. Just go to the DB connection, refresh it, refresh it. Now go to the tables list. Tables list, you can see student underscore info table. See here, stu underscore info table. And if you run this script now, select star from stu info, you can see there is a table. There is a table with these fields, these fields, okay? Right? Of course, you can drop a table as well. If you, if you don't want, you can drop stu underscore info. Drop table. Oh, okay, drop table table name. Drop table table name. You can see your table dropped. And if you refresh, I mean, this is all SQL script. Here. I mean, for every IT guy, minimum SQL knowledge is required. Okay, right. So now what I want to do, my table dropped. If you see the select statement, there is no table. Suppose, guys, if you don't have any grip on this SQL statements, yes, you can go through Google. You can find everything, uh, all these statements in Google. So how to create the table, SQL script to create the table, uh, select script to open the table, I mean, see the data of the table. So you can insert the data, you can delete the data. A lot of SQL scripts are available to perform different actions. So anyway, <clears throat> for our use case, what I want is, I want total marks as well. Let me add one more field total marks and it must be a number done so this is my table script let me create the table done so my table created of course you can see the table so there is no data as of now there is no data in my table it's just an empty table it's an empty table okay right so this is how you can set up your db object so we are done with setting up our DB object by using SQL developer tool or by using JDeveloper. Uh, so in our practice, I used JDeveloper. Not only JDeveloper, guys, there is an option. There is an option to use SQL developer as well. Even in the SQL developer, the same configuration, same scripts we need to do. Okay, SQL developer is most widely used by the SQL, uh, uh, PLSQL developers, okay? I will share this SQL developer software also with you. If you are interested, you can, you can download and uh, run the SQL developer in your machine, but I suggest uh, for our practice purpose, no need to install separate software called SQL developer IDE. It's a separate IDE, right? Uh, again, that makes a load on your machine. 
so i don't i don't suggest you at this point of time if your machine supports to run these many applications at the same time yeah of course you can install oracle ID, uh, oracle sql developer ide and then there also you can create the similar connection you can create a similar connection and you can run the script like this okay so this part also done this part also done we created the connection we created the db connection in j developer and we run the script to create the table right so in the next session i will concentrate on the soa program as per our requirement how to insert the data by using db 